بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في العرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف This is our sixth session, and as you know, we study every day a few pages of the book Mafatihul Hayat by Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli Sallamahullah. Alhamdulillah, we have been receiving very good comments from different countries up to Australia, from Kashmir, US, Canada. And from yesterday also, we started putting the transcripts of each lecture online. So, inshallah, Allah helps us to continue till we finish this book, inshallah, after months of Ramadan. We said that one aspect of a personal character of a believer is that he is always engaged in learning and teaching. It's very important. We already mentioned some hadith. Another hadith is from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you see the way Rasulullah Ahlul Bayt talk about knowledge is very much different from other things. You know, imagine for example, if I have traveled to tens of countries and I talk about my good memories, but there is a place that when I come there, I am very passionate and, you know, excited. It seems to me that when Ahlul Bayt reach knowledge, they are like that. There is nothing <laughs> like knowledge that they so much emphasize on. Of course, this knowledge is connected to Iman, it's uh, piety, and so on and so forth. Rasulullah said, Man ahabba an yandhura ila utaqa illa min an Whoever wants to look at people who are freed by God from fire, in, you know, in the month of Ramadan, one of the best things we want is that to be freed from fire in the night of Eid, the same. It's a very important thing. So if you want to look at people that you can be sure that these are the people that Allah has freed them from fire, means freed them from the worry of fire approaching them. فَلْيَنْظُرْ إِلَى الْمُتَعَلَّمِينَ Look at seekers of knowledge. Look at talabah, look at every mu'min or mu'mina who is learning. Of course, in order to be called mutaallim, it should be something serious. So if once in a week I read a few pages or listen to one lecture, I, I'm not called muta'allim. Muta'allim means something that his engagement with learning is a lot. فَوَالَّذِي nafsi بِيَّدِهِ Rasulullah says, By the one in whose hand my life lies. Rasulullah doesn't need to swear, but to leave no doubt for any person, even if someone is, you know, always doubting, he says, وَالَّذِي nafsi بِيَّدِهِ The one who has my soul, my life in his hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَا مِنْ مُتَعَلِّمٍ يَخْتَلِفُ إِلَىٰ بَابِ الْعَالِمِ إِلَّا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِكُلِّ قَدَمٍ عِبَادَةَ سَنَةٍ There is no seeker of knowledge who 
goes and comes. Yachtelef or ikhtilaf means this is something which is continuing. To the door of alam. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every step gives him reward of one year of worship. وَبَنَ اللَّهُ بِكُلِّ قَدَمٍ مَدِينَةً فِي الْجَنَّةِ And Allah for every step builds for him a city in heaven. Means something in heaven that for you in dunya looks like a city. You know, in your worldly scales, it's a city in a worldly scale. It's not a house. وَيَمْشِي عَلَى الْأَرْضِ وَهِيَ تَسْتَغْفِرُ لَهِ He or she is walking on the earth and the earth is asking for forgiveness for him or her. There are people that they walk on the earth and earth is cursing them. <laughs> there are people that walk on the earth and earth doesn't mind. But there are people who walk on the earth and earth is excited that this moment, this seeker of knowledge is putting his or her feet on me. I am helping him in this journey. He starts his day or finishes his day. Yusbehom is starts his day, Yom finishes his day while he is forgiven. He is constantly being forgiven. He starts with forgiveness and ends with forgiveness. So he is always being looked after. وَشَهِدَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَنَّهُمْ أُتَقَاءُ اللَّهِ مِنَ النَّارِ also, angels would bear witness, would bear witness that these are people who are freed. So it's officially also <laughs> registered. This is a, for, a true seeker of knowledge. Someone who learns for the sake of Allah and wants to implement everything that he learns, first implements himself, then shares with other people. This is the position. So you don't need to look for, you know, something mysterious. You don't need to go to Mars, you know, to find a way to Allah. <laughs> it's just available to everyone. In another hadith, Rasulullah said, فَإِنَّ حُضُورَ مَجْلِسَ عَالِمٍ أَفْضَلُ مِنْ حُضُورَ أَلْفِ جَنَازَةِ It's very much recommended that if there is a funeral, if a person has passed away and People are, you know, carry his body to bury him. It's very much recommended to attend, even if it's not your friend or relative, to attend, to show respect, to accompany the body, to ask for forgiveness. It's very recommended. But if you have a choice to go to dars, take some lesson from Alim, or go to funeral or carry a body of that person, while there are other people, it's not that you are the only person. There are other people. You just want to go for reward. Rasulullah says, It's better than attending 1,000 janazah. And not just this. And not is better than visiting 1,000 ill people. Again, it's very recommended to visit someone who is ill. It's very recommended. And one of the places that your prayer or the prayer of that person for you is very likely to be answered is when you visit an ill person. But nothing comparable to attending Majlis Al. I think one way to understand this, look at Shaitan. Which one makes shaitan more upset? You go to a janazah 
or you go to an alim. I think shaitan said, go to one million channels. <laughs> as long as you don't learn anything, and you don't improve your behavior, I don't mind. Go to one million janas. But shaitan is very worried. This man is going to an alim. Maybe he will learn something. Maybe he will change. Maybe he will become a sincere person. What can I do with him later? So he has to bring all the excuses and make all the obstacles to stop him going to an alim. And since in Islam, masjid is also a place of learning. It's very important. In masjid, we fight two things. Mihrab. Mihrab is a place of war. Harb. What are we fighting in masjid? We fight with shaitan. But shaitan has two major ways of attacking us. One is through jahl, one is through zulm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Zulm, injustice, and jahl, ignorance are major problems. In masjid we go and work on ourselves how to first stop zulm from us and jahl in us and then how to stop zulm and jahl outside. So masjid is also supposed to be a place of learning. This is why I always say everything that we do must have big element of ma'rafah. Every majlis, every recitation, everything must either review, refresh your knowledge or add Otherwise, it's not good. Pure emotion. No. Ma'arifah must be there. So, Rasulullah said, Man ghada ila al-masjid. The one who goes to masjid. La yuridu illa liyata'allama khayran aw liyu'allimahu he doesn't go to masjid except for learning or teaching. He wants to learn khayran, something good, something useful, or he wants to teach. He has the reward of a person who does a very proper umrah. If one of you, inshallah all of you, came today to masjid for learning something. Your Umrah, inshallah, kabul. <laughs> because this is Umrah. Not only that, it has a still continuity. وَمَنْ رَاحَ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ لَا يُرِيدُ إِلَّا لِيَتَعَلَّمَ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيُعَلِّمَهُ فَلَهُ أَجْرُ حَاجٍ تَامَّ الْحَجَّ he has the reward of a person who has done Hajj, but not incomplete Hajj, Tom, a Hajj which is complete. So one Hajj and one Umrah. <laughs> what can be more generous than this? So it's very important to be always involved in learning. We have lots of beautiful hadiths here but I would like to mention something from life of the Prophet and you must have heard this this is very famous خرج رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فإذا في المسجد مجلسان رسول الله went to masjid because you know رسول الله when he was coming out of his home he was in masjid so he said, this is why he says, kharaja ila al-masjid. <laughs> because as soon as he was coming out, he was in masjid. Many people in Medina had their doors open to masjid. But the ayah came and Rasulullah, and Allah asked him that uh, he should ask people to close their door and go from, you know, outside 
and back other people, except his home and Amirul Mu'minin alayhi salam's home. فَسَدَّ الْأَبْوَابَ إِلَّا بَابَهِ So Rasulullah, when he was coming out, he was in masjid. خَرَجَ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدْ Then in masjid, there were two majlis, two sittings, two gatherings. Majlisun yatafaqqahun There was a circle of people who were learning, trying to understand Islam better. Wa majlisun yad'oona Allaha wa yas'aloonahu And there was another group, they were praying, they were, for example, reciting du'ai kumail, for example. Du'ai samad, yad'oon, they were calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa yas'aloonahu and asking. Faqaal Alhamdulillah, no, no one was in masjid doing any other thing. <laughs> no one was doing, you know, for example, gossiping or I don't know, you know, doing business or, you know, thing. no. Two things, ibadah and ta'allum. This is the place of masjid, as we said. Faqal, kilal majlisayn ila khair. Both of these gatherings are aiming at something good. Ila khair, not ala khair. Ilakhir means they will have good results, both of them. Amma ha'ula, then he pointed at those who were praying. Fayyad'oon Allah. They are calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are calling upon Him. Wa amma ha'ula, fayyata'allamoon wa yufaqihoon al jahil. And the other group, they are learning and teaching those who don't know. Ha'ula'i after. Rasulullah said, they are better. The one who are learning and teaching. Can you imagine? He is not a scientist or a scholar. <laughs> he is, of course, very knowledgeable. But I mean, he's a prophet. And you expect a prophet in masjid should tell you the most appropriate thing in masjid is dua. But this is a prophet who is connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he knows the most important thing is learned. So he says, these are better. Then he said, I have been sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for teaching. And then he brings before or to means for this, either as ta'kid or has, either it's for emphasis or exclusiveness. Allah has sent me for ta'aleem. Of course, with ta'aleem comes dua, with ta'aleem comes salat, with ta'aleem comes fasting. But Allah has not sent me just to pray with people and teach them how to pray. Allah has sent me to educate people. Then Rasulullah sat with the people who were learning and teaching. This is the blessing of learning and teaching. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enable us to use every day of our life in service of knowledge, learning and teaching. And every moment of our life in a very mindful state of his remembrance, inshallah. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our parents who have taught us love for Islam, love for learning. If they are alive, we ask Allah to bless their lives. If they have passed away, we ask Allah to accept every hasana that they did with generosity and if they had done any sayyah, to forgive them with maximum mercy. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the souls of all ulama and all true teachers of humanity, all the prophets, all the imams, all the godly scholars, and keep for us alive and healthy and strong and effective our living ulama, inshallah. We ask Allah for shifa for all marda, all ill people, especially people whose illness has taken long, people whose illness has affected their life and life of 
near ones seriously. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Hakka Muhammad wa Ala Muhammad, to give them shifa in this month of Ramadan, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for peace and security and prosperity of all innocent people, all oppressed people, any human being, any child of Adam all over the world, we ask Allah to give him prosperous and peaceful life, inshallah. And we ask Allah to prepare us for entering night of battle. That would be the best thing that you can achieve in this month if you are able to witness Laylatul Qadr. May Allah, inshallah, enable us to witness Laylatul Qadr. Walhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin.